there is um, a clarion call by Nigerians and stakeholders within the broadcast industry for a change in the price regime of all digital terrestrial transmission DTT and direct to whom DTH providers from the present one model, one bundle system to pay as you go, pay per view or pay per watch. That is daily, weekly or monthly model. It is in this vein that we have to listen to the plight of Nigerians by living up to our conditional responsibilities as stipulated in the 1999 condition of the Federal Republic of Nigeria as amended for the full implementation of pay as go model across Nigeria by satellite TV operators. We are also of the opinion that multi-choice, the owners of DSTV is not um, sensitive to the plight of Nigerians at large for increasing the tariff of their various bouquet and anchoring that on VAT increment from 5% to 7.5, where in the real sense, most of, the, most of its bouquet price tariff is more than the 2.5 increment, unlike many other companies, both local and international, that are providing palliative measures to cushion the effects of COVID-19. It is worthy of note that on Tuesday, 30th of June 2020, the Honorable Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, and the acting DG of NBC confirmed to this Hattel Committee on Pay As You Go model that Pay As You Go is not only possible, but it has started in Nigeria with other providers and that there is a new approved national broadcasting code agreed to by all stakeholders. He also stated that Section 315 and 901 of the NBC code prohibits content exclusivity and allow for local content participation, which as part of our mandate, we would like your organization to henceforth comply forthwith so as to allow for healthy competition in the broadcast industry. The Honorable Minister of Information and Culture in his submission to this committee also collaborated that pay as you go is in existence in Nigeria. He stated that other providers, both um, DTT and DTH platform provide this model and also give similar countries that are providing this model. It is also worthy to state that from the presentation received from Multi-Choice Nigeria on the 22nd September 2020, where you categorically stated that the ongoing investigation by the Hattel Committee amount to duplication of the hard work done by the Information Committee of the 8th Assembly and it will undermine the integrity of the House of Representatives. Let me, let me, on behalf of this committee and the House of Representatives, state clearly that it is not the duty of any private concern to prescribe how the nine assemblies should go, do their work, as is a conditional responsibility. Please note. Presently, multi-choice Nigeria provides box office service, services on the PVR sets top boxes, and this is similar to the pay-per-view model that they are shy away from. The other lack of communication can be done using short message service and broadband services once your conditional access system and subscribers management system is programmed. Why we agreed to the price var variables in your presentation for the price regime? The total number of active subscribers slash population was omitted, which is a key variable. If this, is, if this variable is put into consideration, the price regime differentials in Nigeria will be humongous as compared with other countries based on the subscriber base of the country and its population. In conclusion, our mandate in this committee is simple. I would like to reiterate to you that we fully committed to the full implementation of um, pay as you go model in Nigeria. Once again, I welcome you and your team. Thank you. Here to which hunt anybody, but we are here to see how we can 
respond to the requests, the plights of Nigerians. So at this point, I would like to invite the MD of multi choice to let us know, you know, the way forward, how this issue can be resolved in, in a way that the entire country will be happy at the end of the day. I don't know if um, you have a copy of um, the last uh, presentation that you did, because most of us... Uh, just permit me to give you a, just a bit of background. Our company, MultiChoice uh, Nigeria, which is registered with the Corporate Affairs Commission as a fully Nigerian company, started business 27 years ago. I think it's important that we give this background so you understand the origin and how you know, we started business here. Now, we started business 27 years ago. Just around the time, our novel industry, known as Nollywood, was, uh, was starting out. And Multitrust Nigeria started just as a very small company with just a few people around one, one office. Today, we directly hire over 1,000 Nigerians and indirectly provide over 20,000 more jobs when you travel around the country and you see those DSTV offices which you see in different cities, it's important to note that these offices are owned by individual Nigerians who we have worked with over the years and empowered. And some of this started as very small, you know, businesses just, you know, outside a small uh, office or just by the roadside which have become very big businesses. Some of them are too big to even be classified as SMEs. I think it's with a lot of pride that our model of business is more through partnerships and empowerment rather than just you know even hiring people. We, we develop and we're very proud that the entertainment industry, which did not exist uh, for a while in this country, we have been the bedrock of developing that and exporting Nigeria to the rest of the world. When we launched Africa Magic 17 years ago, I think Nollywood was not what it is. It wasn't an African phenomenon or a worldwide phenomenon. But as we grew, we took Nollywood along with us, creating multiple channels and exporting Nigerian talent around the continent and the rest of the world. I'm sure the honorable members and other guests here, when they travel around and mention Nigeria, it's they're easily identified with the Nollywood and music stars which we have helped create around the world. Uh, in almost 20 years, that is us spending over 41 billion creating and producing Nigerian movies. And in fact, today we are proud that we have the largest library of Nollywood content in the world. Uh, through, and we pioneered 24 hour channels, our Africa Magic showcase with us bringing Nigerian languages back to the forefront. Today, you can watch in Hausa, Igbo, and Yoruba, and who knows what other languages in future would be able to put on TV. That is for us a lot of pride. We have pi pioneered programs like Tinsel, which is the r longest running TV show in Nigeria, along with several other big Hotel Majestic and a lot of other programs which we have developed in Nigeria by Nigerians, owned by Nigerians. But that's not all. Uh, let me maybe just give you a little background of my own story. I mean, I joined uh, this company about 24 years ago, you know, fresh out of school as an engineer and grew to become the managing director of the company in 2011 and confirmed as the CEO in 2018. And I'm not an exception. I'm also proud that uh, one of the people I hired as uh, during NYC as an intern is today the HR director for the larger company in Africa. I could go on naming a lot of other talent which we have developed, who have moved on to take bigger positions even outside the country. We have over 380 of the dealers I mentioned who own their businesses, running those businesses uh, across the country. So it's a tough environment to you know, operate for a lot of reasons I will not bore you with. However, we know the challenges we face. 
But each time I had, you know, wake up and had to walk, I'm very proud of what we've built, what we are enabling Nigerians to do. I mean, the young people who are, you know, frustrated today, we've been able to create a lot of jobs for them to use their talent. You know, talent is something that is universal. That's where the American or the British doesn't have any advantage of us. It's not an industry or a factory we have to create. With our talent, we can catch up. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, I'm a, you know, a Nigerian like every one of us here. I was born, you know, uh, uh, and, and I'm from Obudu in Cross River State. I schooled and I attended uh, you know, the Federal University of Technology, you know, where here in Nigeria, uh, served here in Lagos and have been working, you know, around the country since uh, 1997. So I consider myself, you know, very full and proper Nigerian, and I, you know, I'm here before you today as someone who's proud of my country and my people, and as someone who's using the opportunity I have as, you know, uh, a leader in this great company to legitimately empower Nigerians and make Nigeria better. And for that reason is why we continue to invest and to, you know, face this uh, challenges that are quite tough in a manner that allows us to continue to be able to do business. You know, my father dedicated his, uh, his life to public service, serving this country till, uh, you know, he retired. And I grew up seeing that dedication to, you know, uh, the state, the country. So I understand and appreciate the service and sacrifice of not just, you know, the committee members present here today, but the entire community of, uh, community of representatives working to make Nigeria better. And I want to thank you all. You are an ally in me. You have an ally in me. And together, I believe we can continue to do our best to make Nigeria better. I will now you know, quickly move on to the submissions on the document uh, just to you know, address uh, the, 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 I think, central issue. issue. I think the crux of the matter, because um, we have already gone through your submission, most of us, and then we just want to iron out the main issue on ground. The reason the committee was set up, the reason Nigerians, you know, are giving us a lot of memos, believing that um, at the end of the day, we are going to come up with something that will make them happy at the end of the day. And what are the reasons? Number one is that um, Nigerians want your organization multi-choice that they love so much the brand is lovely but they believe that the the brand will be more lovely if you can implement um, pay as you go so that um, when they are not at home they can save their money the second reason we are here is that nigerians are saying that given the current situation in the country covid 19 that is ravaging the entire economy everybody is crying that um, the increment is not right, the time is not right, that you should reverse the price. These are the two reasons that we are here. Even though there are other you know, issues, but these are the primary reasons that the House of Representatives, you know, March um, this year, set up this committee to carry out this uh, investigation to see how you and the committee can agree and then make Nigerians happy in this regard. Thank you very much. You know, we got your questions. We did reply to say... The, the Sorry, my colleagues... Uh, in line with the submission we had sent in earlier, we were able to address the fact that when we did the price adjustment, it was in response to the new finance bill. And uh, if you look at it, you would see that we were even late and we're, you know, uh, in in making those changes. But uh, I think you mentioned the word, uh, you know, palliatives earlier. And I think it's important that, you know, the committee notes that we were one of those companies who woke up to the entire issue around COVID-19 and extended our hand of support to the government, spending over one billion naira to support the government, uh, you know, put in cash 
and in sensitization and also in just donating PPEs to help fight. So the adjustment at that time was just as a result of the uh, uh, new finance bill. However, as I mentioned, uh, the committee is also aware of the increase in cost of living, uh, petrol, uh, diesel. These are very basic inputs that go into our service. And we are one of those companies that, you know, the broadcasting industry did not shut down for one day. We had to keep everything running. We listened to the call and made sure that at that time, what we did was to drop our content to the lower amounts and in effect, subsidize and make it easier for people to pay. So we are one of those companies that came up at this time to offer support, both to the subscriber at home and also uh, to the government. However, in order to be able to provide this service with our depreciating Naira and the rest of the inputs that go into our business, we have to be able to sustain the business. It will be callous of us to allow the business to fold up and render more people uh, you know, unemployed. So we have been, you know, uh, through considerations, ensuring that we can, as much as possible, manage our prices and keep the consumer at home, you know, entertained and watching with education, everything that can help the country to go through this COVID period. Uh, and a lot of those, uh, uh, you know, uh, initiatives which we have carried out, I think have been seen by the people and also we have received those, uh, you know, messages appreciating uh, what we've done. Even the, uh, you know, the Honorable Minister reached out to us to thank us for everything we were able to do at that time. On the pay-as-you-go model, I think we've always said, uh, you know, there's, I mean, probably a misconception between pay-as-you-go as is obtained in the telecommunications industry and the TV industry. It's not a concept that is available in the uh, uh, broadcast industry because it's not a two-way uh, communication in the broadcast industry. Uh, I mean, the Honorable uh, Chairman mentioned, you know, data and through the mobile telecoms. Those are additional costs. Broadcast by nature is one to many without a return path, okay? But also, if you look at some of the international organizations who are offering some of those services, even online, where it's two-way communication, who are not on ground here, do not pay taxes here, but are beginning to offer services and in competition even in this market, you would see that the billing method is still the same fixed mm -hmm. billing method because it is a fixed billing method that is the model in, 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 the, in the pay TV industry. Mm -hmm. So telecommunication companies can offer that pay as you go where you can stop and restart. Unfortunately, that is not the model in the broadcast industry. And you must also accept that we have to buy these services, repackage and sell. And you cannot be selling differently from when you buy. I always use uh, a few examples to say, for instance, when you go to watch a football match and you buy a ticket, if uh, your team is not doing well, like my team, often at times they've uh, considered even three goals before uh, halftime. I won't mention the team because some people here may also like the team. You cannot get up and leave the stadium at that time. Uh, you, you can leave, but you will not get a refund when you walk out, even if you've only watched 10 minutes. That is also the model where we have to prepay and buy these things and then create. Internationally, what actually is standards is that people sign a 12-month contract, which you cannot terminate. Whether you decide not to watch for six months, the bill runs. However, here, we have that one-month fixed billing method. As, a, an, as an organization that is always learning and watching, we watch the industry, 
we see where trends are, and we would always learn and see. But at this point, this is the business model which we can implement using the technology. We don't have the technology to support that, start the service, switch off the TV, it stops, or restart the service at 12 and stop it at 1 p.m. That technology is not available to us. We don't have that technology. And as a business, we have to try to continue to offer a service, which is why over time we have made sure that we have created smaller bouquets that have offered smaller prices to allow people access to the service for reduced pricing and we've continuously you know uh, moved and added content added channels to be able to offer even a very good service even at the lowest uh, part of you know uh, the offering thank you mr chairman it's achievable and not achievable I want to take you on on two things. One is to have better respect for this institution because of past invitation which you've not made. Let me just put that on record. Secondly, you said something earlier. You made an analogy about buying a football ticket. First of all, if we want to compare Apple to Apple, let's do it the right way. I can buy a season ticket to see any uh, football matches. I can buy a day ticket just to see a single match. Whether I choose to watch that match or not, it's irrelevant. But I have the option of buying the day ticket as opposed to buying the season ticket which means that if I choose not to watch, I'm going to lose all of my money. What you should be comparing here is that I know for sure that if I make my payment on the first and it's good for 30 days, by the end of that 30 days, you turn off, right? without even getting into the technical details of single signal and all of these things that we're going to talk more and entertain one another, I know for sure you can choose to turn off your service in a week. You can choose to turn off your service in two weeks. You can choose to turn off your service in a day, on a daily basis. It's totally programmable. It's totally up to you. So I just want us to be very sincere with Nigerians about this. You also made a submission about being uh, a true Nigerian. I appreciate that. But you also understand that Nigerians are going through a very, very tough time right now. What is the percentage increase in VAT? And what is the percentage increase that you passed on to your customers in terms of your, the price of your bouquet? You, we have to really look at this and look at the hardship that Nigerians are going through right now. You've done two increments in this period. In this period, one, I think you said to the tune of for the VAT and the other one is probably the cost of doing business. But I want you to look at Nigerians and tell them, really, is this the right time? for you to pass on this hardship to them. Thank you. I mean, we'll have some other technical questions for you, but I want to stop. That hardship is the same hardship we are also going through. So we're not, you know, because I think at times we get abstracted as if, you know, we're not different. It's the same. So the same increase in the cost of food today is what affects us. The same increase in diesel, we have to be able to pay for these services. And some of the challenges we face are being able to afford to keep the service running. Without the service running, it's a catastrophe in terms of same loss of jobs in the same environment. What we did when we did 
the VAT, the other increases, we also ab abstracted certain bouquets which were lower, which we did not increase. It was also in reaction to that call to say, make it a bit easier. So we said, okay, let's look at the lower, where more of the masses sit, and those we did not affect an increase on when we did uh, you know, the price adjustments. On the VAT, we had to take it across every, because I mean, that is in line with the laws that have been passed. We are not abstracted from that. But please permit me to say, uh, the challenges are the same challenges we face uh, as a company. We are, my staff are all Nigerians. They are all faced with some of this. And that is why, at every point, we have been one to raise our hand to support. Uh, at the forefront, I mention it because at the forefront of the COVID fight, we were there. We stood with the country. We contributed cash. We contributed things. We put the message out. We also created programming then to enable people stay home, study from home, have some entertainment, to support the instructions which were stay at home. And that's what we've done. In terms of the uh, uh, analogy I, I used earlier, uh, yes, you know, uh, as you said, there can be different periods of billing at this point. But in everything, you have to package properly and not rather increase the cost of the service by packaging. So one, you need to be able to bill properly and collect and fulfill. That capacity to bill properly, you know, collect and fulfill for one day at 12 p.m. today and at 12 you know, uh, p.m. tomorrow, we don't have that. Uh, one of the things I said earlier was, as a business, we're always looking. Before, when we started, we had one big bouquet. And over time, we cut it up and made smaller bouquets available. The same approach we take with our programming. When we started Africa Magic, it was one channel. And over time, we increase, we look at business, we take learnings, we try. It's a cost to change technology. Billing technology is one of the most expensive part of conditional access billing. To change those in these times, you know, to be able to, we have to take it back, look at the model of the business, and then implement what is possible. But at every time, we have to be mindful of all those young actors and co, because any wrong move where we are out of business even creates a bigger catastrophe for us. The entertainment business is one of the growing industries in Nigeria. That's where a lot of the emphasis is to try to build that industry. Our ability to buy content from these people is also tied to our ability to be able to earn and collect some money. So we, you know, I'm not being disrespectful. Like I mentioned earlier, as any, as any business, we continue to learn. However, as a business, you don't just copy what the other person has done. Even when you don't understand and you don't know the impact, you could be out of business. Because at the end of the day, we have responsibilities to all, to you know, the country, to the people we hire, to the people who make a living. Uh, in a production, we have carpenters. We have uh, you know, people feeding the people who work there. And all these people, that is the responsibility we face. The MD. Uh, it's for us to make this year in full blown. Full blown in the sense that we have documents at our disposal from, for instance, the Minister of Information detailing other countries, other companies, showing how possible this thing is. We have documents and submissions from individuals that are engineers showing that this is possible and you are here painting a picture that it is totally impossible 
We have companies like you who go into this same, who are into the same business. One week, two weeks, you pay, you go. And you are here telling us it's either one month or never. You are pushing us to a situation where constitutionally we have to invoke our powers to look at your books. Look at your accounts. Look at the number of subscribers you have. Vis-a-vis -vis what you are talking about. You can't make us here look like we are doing nothing, we don't know what we are doing, like we don't have information. It is not fair. If you are truly Nigerian, this is not fair. I won't take that. I'm, I'm not going to sign any document, going back to the chambers and telling 360 members that we couldn't do this assignment, telling over 200 million Nigerians that the assignment they gave us, we failed. I want you to have that at the back of your mind. And Chairman, I want to move very strongly that he has to come back. We have to invite the Minister of Information, everybody that has made us say that as a people, representative of the people who speak for Nigerians. There are two things here which I also want to agree with my Deputy Chair. There are two things we are discussing, pay as you go and your price increase. And that's exactly what is affecting Nigerians. They want to see that. To me, I feel you've said a lot of things that you've done throughout this pandemic and how you've been helping this country. But because you've done all these things, that doesn't make the price right. I want you to put yourself into the middle and the lower class Nigerians. DSTV goes to nude and crannies of this country, and they pay charges to that. And Nigerians are complaining of how much they are paying and the increase that's happening there and the technology where they will have pay as you go. That two things we are asking for. There are a lot of multinationals that are doing what you are doing. I mean, helping Nigerians, I mean, showcasing Nigerians all over the world. But if the price is not right, Nigerians are not happy paying it. The thing here is, what can you do to make life easy for Nigerians, to pay with comfort, and also the technology is good for all Nigerians? That is what we are after. Opinion on pay as you go model generally. Your individual opinion, is it practiced? Can you confirm to us whether it has been practiced internationally or not? Whether it is practicable or not? Secondly, I want to appreciate that. You, you do you have license broadcasting all the channels on your platform? Do you have license for all the channels that you are broadcasting on your platform? Okay. Yeah. The Israelis patronize Intelsat. The Chinese patronize their satellite providers. The Germans patronize their satellite providers. We have a provider called Nightcomsat. And you are well aware of the huge investment the nation has made in this company. Is there a technical reason that you are not patronizing them? And secondly, and lastly. Um, we have a um, motion pending. I've not given ruling on it, so we don't need to come up with another motion. Let's just give him the opportunity to address the questions that was put before him. After that, we'll now look at um, the pending motion before we take another one. Please, let's just give him an opportunity to address um, the issues. And Mr. MD, I would like to advise that, um, you know, for sake of time, that you should go straight to the point and then answer the question practically. Because what really make them to... The, when the business, you know, started providing the service on the satellite, uh, night concert wasn't available. The decision around changing satellites will pr practically mean repointing every dish. And it's a business decision. We have to find where we can buy satellite capacity and for how much, and then be able to package you know, a service on that capacity. Uh, there was a question around the growth of the business. Uh, and, I, and I think it's one, first, important to mention that in 
thinking of the numbers around the business is households, not you know population. So uh, we first have to say the maximum is the number of households in Nigeria. So it's uh, not you know uh, the analogy cannot be with telecoms because of the, the you know you can have two three cell phones uh, and five people in a household can have fifteen phones, whereas for us it's one decoder that will be serving that household. So uh, I think in relation to the numbers you mentioned earlier, yes, we look at the growth of the business to make those decisions around pricing. And that's why over time we've been able to, you know, provide lower uh, levels of service at lower prices. But this service is a service that essentially you are buying the same content as a company in the US or in the UK for your international content. So those costs are borne by everyone. And if you take uh, pricing and you compare it with pricing in other territories, we're lower. You know, we've provide, I mean, that has even been published in the press to show the comparison. Uh, there was then the question around uh, pay as you go, as, and we've said, no, it's not possible, as obtained in telecoms where you can start and stop. No, uh, I think there was a mention about some information that was provided to the committee, we're ready to write and provide information and to take those uh, maybe services that were mentioned and to break it down. It's broadcasting, that is what we do. Yeah. And there's no broadcaster in the world where you, you can put on your box, it starts running and switch it off and it stops running or stop it and it stops running. And, and we're ready, you know, to provide supporting information to that and the committee, you know, obviously will be able to do its own, uh, its own research. Then there was a question around box office. Uh, and I, I think maybe, uh, because at times I have to give some background to answer certain questions. What you have is, in movies, you have a cinema window, you have a DVD window before a pay TV window. So a new movie doesn't go to pay TV immediately. What the box office provides, it provides movies that are still in the DVD window. The owners of those movies only want those movies on a rental. That's why it allows you to be able to rent one of those movies and watch those movies. On the pay TV model, when you get to more than six months after the movie is released, you're then allowed to show it on TV, on a channel, and add it as part of the subscription. So that is why on pay TV you are able to rent those movies that have just come out of the cinema but are not yet in the pay TV window as part of a channel. Uh, then I think there was a question around the NBC code. Yes, we respect the code. We work with the NBC and we've always worked with the code. That's why we've been in the industry for 27 years. Yes, we're compliant. Yes, I mean the NBC writes us. We meet with the NBC regularly. 27 years we've worked, with, you know, within the, uh, the laws and with the invariable at that time. So it is also a commercial service. I mean, you mentioned Intelsat. It's not only the is Israelis. Intelsat is available worldwide. It's used in America. It's used in the UK by different services. So every satellite service can be used by every commercial player. So when, and, and, and satellite services are not also deals that you do and change tomorrow. So we have a long-standing uh, you know, uh, relationship with Utilsat, which we have used for the service. In fact, we got, that was the first KU band that was launched over Africa. And it came from a need from us to reduce the cost of ownership, because in those days it was very big dishes. What a change in satellite services will mean is a visit to every home that has a dish to repoint it towards a new satellite. It's not, you know, it's not an easy business decision that you can make and switch within a short period. So it's a commercial decision that we continue to evaluate. And when we see, uh, we have a lot of commercial decisions where we use commercial services in Nigeria by Nigerians for lots of, you know, parts of our business uh, in terms of, I mean, content. And every country has a strong point in terms of content you would see channels called African Magic. What do they show? Nigerian content. A, to a lot of the other African, uh, African brothers, they complain when they see that a lot of what you see is Nigerian music, Nigerian movies, 
It's our strong point, and we're developing that strong point to make it even stronger. Okay. Now, um, uh, Chairman, if you want me to accept, to give him that soft landing, so to speak, when he's coming, black Nigerians be here to listen to him. Let Nigerians be here to interact with him. Let the Minister of Information be here. What are we going to lose anyway? We are losing nothing. Let professionals come and listen to him. Tomorrow we will wash our hands. If this thing cannot be done the way Nigerians want, they will take it home themselves. I am not ready to be boxed into a corner so that I can't enter my constituency. No. People send me here. I'm representing them. This committee is representing 360 members. We're not doing our own business. We're doing business with 360 members. That's the essence of the committee. And if I am to accept that you should go back and do what you are doing, Chairman, respectfully and humbly, I will request when he's coming back, let the Minister of Information be here. Let the MDC uh, director be here. Let engineers who are experts in this matter also be here. So that you will tell everybody, I cannot do it. Then we can wash our hands. Less than that, I think he's coming back. The Minister of Information should be here. The MBC uh, DG should be here. Experts who have already made submissions, engineers should be here to tell us whether this thing is possible or not. We're not saying close your company. We're not saying uh, do anything that is not doable. We're saying provide where one week is possible. Somebody wants to take one week. He doesn't have money to pay for two weeks. I mean, one month. Let him pay for one week. Shut him out. Somebody wants to pay for two weeks. Let him do so. We're not saying do per minute billing. No, that's not what I'm saying. That is not what we're insisting. So we need this positive. Short period. You know, and, and, and let Nigerians here and interact with you themselves. Less than that, me, I won't do it. Thank you very much. Thank you. And, uh, in the absence of the, I rise to second the motion as moved by the Deputy Chairman. Thank you. Our guests, distinguished um, ladies and gentlemen, the motion of uh, the Deputy Chairman still stands, but is subject to the inability of um, multi-choice to accept um, Nigerians' um, position, which is to implement uh, pay as you go, and also the price um, reversal. If they refuse to do that, I think that's when the motion stands. And that's what um, the Deputy Chairman said. That when, when, when they are coming back, the, the Deputy Chairman said, when they are coming back, they should ensure. Look at what the Deputy Chairman said. He said, when they are coming back, that he should ensure that um, he comes with these people. Maybe he has one or two things to say. You know, thank you for the opportunity. And, uh, you know, as the conclusion uh, earlier that I was going to take this to also go and discuss with my board and uh, then you know provide the committee with some more information. Thank you very much Mr. Chairman and honorable members. Go and think uh, with um, the board. Since the MD alone cannot stand and take decision here and by the time he returns here we want to see that um, Pay as you go is implemented. And then the um, price reversal is done. So I would like uh, members to suggest the time that we, um, from the input from my colleagues, they said that uh, it should liaise with the secretariat um, for the time. And then let us know the exact time we are coming back to implement our position. Thank you very much.